Hey folks, wanna know my number one trick for getting the most tender, juicy pork chop on the grill you ever had? Stick around, I'm fitting to show you. It is a beautiful day. And by the way, if some of y'all are new to our channel, first of all, me and Shan wanna welcome you to this. What are we doing today? I'm gonna show you how to grill the perfect pork chop to make it tender, to make it juicy. So many people, when they grill a piece of pork, they tend to dry it out because they overcook it. How can you achieve this and still have that tender juiciness on the inside? Well, today is your lucky day, folks, because I'm gonna show you how. And first of all, there's one thing you've gotta know that's very important. Don't be going up there to your local store and buying one of them pork chop that's about maybe 3 16ths of an inch bigger than a gnat's bristle because they ain't gonna work. You'll burn them up. You can see through them, read the newspaper. I'm talking about something, get some size on that rascal. Least inch and a quarter, 14, 15 ounce, bone in. Why bone in? Cause it's a handle, that's what it's for. Start with that lime juice. Remember what I've told you, lime is for beef, pork, wild game. Anything that's got fins or feathers, what we're we gonna put on it? lemon juice the acidity in there breaks down muscle connective tissue which is going to what going to make it more tender but it does not mask the flavor no it enhances flavor that lime juice a little meat tenderizer and of course that ever popular you should have in your cabinet every day of the week 365 days a year red river ranch seasoning so lime juice both sides really rub it in really well i like to get it everywhere sides Turn it over, do the same thing. Meat tenderizer. Make sure it ain't got no MSG in there, folks, cause I'm allergic to that and I might show up and eat at your house so you don't want to give me the poisoning. Red River Ranch Original. Now I'm cooking on mesquite today, but if you ain't got no mesquite and you like that flavor, you can sure order you some Red River Ranch mesquite seasoning. Now say you're gonna cook this recipe today, but you ain't got this and you just gotta get her done. Find you some coarse ground black pepper, some good sea salt, some garlic, maybe a little smoked paprika, put it on there. But make sure you season it well. Two things you really gotta watch out for when you're cooking a piece of pork. Under season, overcook. That's gonna make dryness. What happens next, you take this little rascal, put it in a baggie, Take it in there and put it in the ice box. Yeah, I said ice box. Now to Shan, that means I don't know. It's a refrigerator. Yeah, we call it ice box here where I'm from. Set it in there in a sack, let it set at least four hours. Then you're gonna bring it out and then you'll be ready to throw it on the grill. But due to the magic of science and YouTube TV, we already have one of them prepared. Now this pork chop is pretty thick as you can see. And if we just put it out there on a really hot fire, it's going to brown up on top too much, might even burn a little. So what's the trick that I'm going to give you all today? It's magic, folks. You ready? Aluminum foil. And if Shan will zoom in here, I want her to see how this sort of makes its own marinade. What we got here, real American butter. Now you got to have some butter every day. What if it's not American butter? <laughs> Ireland has really good butter. Huh. Well, according to Shan, a lot of folks have really good butter. Now I'm gonna take me some of this really good butter that is unsalted. I'm gonna lay one right there and I'm gonna lay one right there. Then I'm gonna fold it up just like you was wrapping the Christmas present. Seal him up really good. Now some of you might be wondering what we're gonna grill it on. Bertha is on a sabbatical. She cooked over a thousand steaks in the last two weeks and she's taken a couple of days off but her little sister, Christina, is here to do the jobs. We're gonna lay this right on the hottest part of that fire. What's it gonna do? Steam these pork chops. Well, folks, we got him and his buddy out there. That's uh, Porky Pig and his brother, Perry Pig. It's gonna start cooking that pork before it actually ever hits that fire. What is that doing? It's gonna keep that moisture in there, make it more tender, and we're not gonna to have to be as long right on that direct heat, so we're not gonna burn this meat nor dry it out. I'm gonna let them go probably three to four minutes on each side, just depending on how hot that fire is, and it is pretty hot. It'll burn the hair off a frog's butt in a hurry, I promise, and we'll take it out of that full, and we will go to grilling.
Well, we've been about three and a half to four minutes on each side, so I'm gonna pull them right over here so I don't burn all the hair off of me again. You wanna be careful on this part of it because there's some steam in there that will give you a facial if you ain't careful. So you can see how that meat has done sort of begin to turn white. So let's put him right there. Ooh, hear that sound? That is a good sound. I got me one side that's a little cooler than the other side. I always like to do that when I'm grilling any kind of meat, but it is good and hot. Remember that rule of thumb, fingers, and burnt knuckles. If you can hold it there for more than five seconds, it ain't hard enough, because I want that stuff to take a hold and go to work, so that's why we need a hot flame. If you're doing this on a gas grill, go ahead and shut that lid to keep that heat in there. Now, you'll begin to see that as it'll brown on these edges first and really care. And you'll even see it pull just a tad away from this bone on the underneath side. But don't be afraid you can turn it too many times. I mean, we ain't gonna throw it up in the air and get rough with it, but I'm gonna check it two or three times. This amount of heat, you may have to turn again. It's beginning to brown a little on that end from that hot fire. So we're gonna take a peek at him. See there, that's what I'm after. Slow him down just a little. So we're gonna move him right over here. Whew. See that caramelization taking place there? Mm. I'm talking, I'm already hungry. So let's slow him down on that side, move him directly off that hot side to what I would call the medium side of the fire. Well, folks, we flipped them steaks back over again. They're getting that color and you can see I touched them. Now, we explained all that in an earlier video on how to grill the perfect steak and you can go back and check that out, the link's above. I'm gonna touch them steaks as you've seen me do or them pork chops. I'm gonna go by the way they feel. It's gonna set up pretty good, be firmer than what it would be with a medium steak. So when we're feeling that piece of pork chop, what are we looking for? Now, them two, not this one, these two, put it together, feel this muscle here on the inside. That's about what a medium pork chop is gonna feel like. Now, I think we need to zoom back in here and take a little gander at this, cause I'm pretty sure these rascals are coming off the fire. But you'll see it pull away from the bone. You'll see the good color. Remember, we done steamed this deal, so I know it's done. We just don't want to dry it out. As they say in loading cow business, we're going to double deck. Oh, there is good color there. It is good to the touch. If you look around here, it's pulled away from that bone a little, as you can see. Everything's sort of drawed up. We're going to let that thing sit and rest just like you do a steak, folks. We've got to let it rest a little bit. Then we'll cut that rascal. If you're not sure about all this stuff here, get you one of them thermometers, stick it in there, don't go through, try to hit the middle of that pork chop, and we're looking about 147, 150. Now 145, they lowered it some years back to where it would be, they thought that was the perfect doneness for pork, just a little pink in the middle. I like about a 150 along in there, See what we got there? That is what we call flavor. Keep it moist, keep it tender, bring out all the flavor, but you gotta remember one more thing, something you gotta have in your pantry that I just so happen to have right here. What is it? Green chili chipotle relish. You know that guy right there? He is good people. The reason I come up with this relish so many years ago was just for these pork chops. Mm. Praise the Lord and pass the biscuits and give me another pork chop. That is good. That pork chop is so juicy, so tender. You could cut that thing with a fork if you wanted to. Place it in some aluminum foil, two pats of butter, seal it up, put it over there. About three and a half to four minutes aside, turn it, same thing on the other side. Take that foil off of it, grill it to perfection, and get ready to indulge yourself in the best pork chop you ever eat in your life. We hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed something. Now, it's getting grilling season, which really grilling season for me runs year round. Memorial Day's coming up, everybody gonna break out a grill then. Shan has created you a playlist of some of the best grilling tips and tricks you'll ever need to know. It'll be right on the little link below. Clicky, click, click. Might be a grilled recipe on there for how to grill possum properly. I don't really know yet. But thank you again for stopping by. For all you new people that have subscribed lately, hey, thank you and God bless you so much. I got one little deal I gotta do a shout out to my man, Moose from down under. Take care, see y'all down the trail. God bless you.
left just a hair. Yep. Alright. Let okay. the car get by. Whenever you're ready. Frank, quiet on the set. <laughs> quiet on the set, Frank. Frank, calm down. Calm down. You're too excited. Now, I want to, no, oh, wait, wait. I want to thank y'all so much for helping me with this pork chop video that I'm going to reward you, okay? There is yours. Now, this beagle here, folks, he is really well trained. You wait, okay? You just wait. You get back, you done had yours, you wait. Okay, I'm not going to let Frank have it. <laughs>